1 Corinthians chapter 13, we're going to begin reading in verse 1. We'll read down to verse, uh, um, let's go down to verse 7 tonight. And I've tried to encourage us to, to memorize 1 Corinthians 13. And uh, we're going to say it enough, so hopefully you, you pick up a little bit just, just by reading it. And so let's begin it together. When I say begin, we'll start in verse 1, okay? Ready, begin. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. We could add to that, charity never faileth. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you again for your goodness. Thank you for this chapter of the Bible uh, that describes for us this very, very important topic, Amen. the topic of, of charity. Thank you. Your love. And I pray as I preach the message you've led me to preach that you'd help me. Help. I need your help tonight. Please yeah. fill me afresh and anew with thy spirit. Amen. Use me, Lord, as an instrument that your word would impact the hearts of your people, yeah. that we might become more like the Lord Jesus Christ because Amen. of the things we heard tonight. Thank you for loving us. We ask your guidance Amen. and blessing now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, tonight we're continuing with the series. If you notice on your handout this evening that... Uh, uh, I've entitled, and again, I stole the title from Christian Stealing, that is, uh, but from the book, uh, To Love is to Live. And uh, to kind of explain the series title, because you probably heard that and you have again and again, say to love is to live, okay, and we move on. But it really means this. If, if you and I are truly going to live the way Christ wants us to live, right. to be like the Lord Jesus Christ, to even have that abundant life that the Lord Jesus Christ promised in John chapter 10, uh, uh, to make a difference in this world with the gospel right. and the spiritual advancement of God's people, then we must, we must, I say it again, must learn uh, to love as Christ loved. Amen. And that's important. Right. Not just to love as you think we ought to love or as the liberals think we ought to love. We need to love as Christ wants us to love. Amen. Now, we are not talking about some emotional, fuzzy feeling kind of love. We're not talking about a permissiveness that masquerades as love, that ignores sin, that avoids confrontation, that enables people to continue in their sin. We're not talking about that passionate love between a husband and wife. We're not talking about the love that we have for our family. We're not talking about the love we have for our friends. We're talking about the love that God shows to all people, Amen. and in particular to us. And that is that agape love. And that's the Greek word, as you know. And this is a love that we read about in 1 John 4, 16, where we read, And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. Right. There it is. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Hosea 11, 4, I drew them with cords of a man, with bands of love. Right. How did the Lord draw Old Testament Israel back to himself? You say, well, he chastened them. Yes, and that was part of his bands of love. Right. That's how, what he used. Uh, John 3, 16, right? For God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting love. And so with this agape love that we've been talking about is a love that disciplines us. Right. It is a love that reproves us. Amen. It is a love that demands holiness. Right. It is a love that is uncompromising, but it also is a love that is kind. It's a love that is comforting, a love that is compassionate, 
It's a love that is highly concerned about our spiritual well-being. And with God's agape love, all of those things I just mentioned, those traits, they all coexist. Right. You say, wait a minute, you can have kindness and discipline together? Yes. Amen. Reproof and holiness? Yes. Right. Being uncompromising and compassionate? Yes. They all go together. And that's what Jesus Christ was, right? How he came to us, what? With grace and truth. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now, we've defined this love this way, and I say it again and again because of such a misunderstanding that's out there about love. We've defined it this way from John 3, 16, that this love, this agape love, is a self-sacrificing act that is done for the spiritual benefit of another person. Right. That's what it is. It's a decision. It's an act, a self-sacrificing act. I don't do what I want to do. I do what God wants me to do. Again, that is done. Why? To benefit, spiritually benefit that other person so that they might, they might advance spiritually as well. And understand, as believers, we are commanded to show this agape love, God's agape love, to all. If we're going to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Matthew 22 and verse 37, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is a first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, notice, hang all the law and the prophets. You want to fulfill God's law? Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Show agape love to others. I like what Ephesians 5, 2 says. I kind of caught this verse this afternoon. If you want to flip a few pages over there, uh, I like this verse. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2. Well, let's read verse 1 too, also. Notice we read, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love. As Christ also hath loved us. So I walk in love, not how I think I ought to behave, right. but as Christ, uh, notice, also hath loved us Amen. and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Amen. So back in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we find in this chapter what I would call the most comprehensive description in the Bible of what God's agape love looks like. That's what charity is. That's a correct translation, a perfect King James Bible translation, that charity is God's love in action. And from verses 4 to 7, uh, we are given, again, 14 descriptive phrases about God's love in action. Here's what it looks like. The first two phrases, notice, uh, beginning in verse 4, are positive phrases. We've looked at these already. I'm just going to mention them, just breeze by them, and that is charity suffereth long and is kind. Notice they're together. In other words, and this is the way I'm kind of throwing it out to you here, God's love puts up with people. It suffers long. People are hard. They're difficult. They can be. By the way, so are you and so am I. We're Amen. people, right? right? We're all difficult. And, and God's love, notice, it puts up with people. It suffers long, and it still continues to treat them kindly. You get the first message if you need that one again. Amen. Then the next eight phrases after those first two positive phrases, suffereth long and is kind, now we get eight negative phrases. In other words, things that, things that love is not or things that love does not do. Now we looked at four of them already. We saw that charity envieth not. In other words, it doesn't crave what other people have. Charity vaunteth not itself, uh, uh, kind of like a pole vaulter, if you will. In other words, lifting ourselves up. Charity doesn't do that. We don't lift ourselves up. We don't pat ourselves on the back. We don't tell others how wonderful we are. Well, we do, but we shouldn't be doing it anyway. And then the third one, notice, is not puffed up. In other words, we don't have that attitude that I am somehow better than somebody else and I don't look down on people. We're not puffed up. And then uh, the, the next one, the fourth negative, is doth not behave itself unseemly. Saw that last week. In other words, we don't get ugly with people. 
We shouldn't get ugly with people uh, if we're showing God's agape love. Now, tonight we are going to look at this fifth thing that God, God's love does not do. Again, two positives. This is the fifth negative. And notice we see right there in the middle of verse 5, we see that charity seeketh not her own. So I'm going to preach on that tonight. Now I have another title, but I don't want to spoil it by giving it to you. But we'll start with this one. And that is, notice, charity seeketh not her own. Now, if there is one message in this series that is particularly important for married couples, it's this one. That Notice that uh, husbands, you need this message. Wives, you need this message. Charity seeketh not her own. If there's one message in this series that's particularly important for fathers, uh, it is this one. Charity seeketh not her own. If there's one message in this series that's particularly important for uh, young people, it's this one as well. Uh, siblings especially, if you want to have a home that's pleasing to the right. Lord, and that is charity seeketh not uh, her own. And, and the quicker that we all understand this truth and live it out, right. not just nod our head out. Guess what? I can nod my head at this very easily. That's right. Amen. That's right. But it's really hard uh, to live it out. But the quicker that we do understand it and live it out, the better our lives uh, and our relationships with other people will be. Life is about people. The ministry is about people. Uh, and if we're going to love people and minister to people, then charity seeketh not her own. So what exactly does this mean? We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. I noticed I got in the pulpit 10, 15 minutes early. Amen. That means I got 15 extra minutes. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll get out maybe a little earlier. All right. Notice, if you will, number one, the definition of seeking your own. Now, I started to look that up. You know, of course, it's really pretty self-explanatory. But really, the phrase, seeketh not her own, comes from two Greek words. The first Greek word is the word zeteo, which means this. <laughs> To seek. Wow, that's, that's, thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, seeketh not her own means to seek. It does, right? It means to seek. It means to go after. It means to pursue. It means to desire. It means to put first. It really means, I thought this was very interesting, it means to put in a place of God. I thought that's interesting, zeteo, to put in the place of God. Now, we find this word zeteo, seeking, in verses like this. Matthew 6, I think we know this one and we get it. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh, Colossians 3, 1, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, Amen. where Christ sitteth at the right, on the right hand of God. So notice we're seeking, we're pursuing, we're putting first the kingdom of God in Matthew 6. In Colossians 3, we're seeking, we're pursuing not earthly things, but those things which are above, Acts 17, 27, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. And so notice what is being taught in those verses I just read, in all of them, and more, and it's a Bible truth, is that we as believers should pursue God. Amen. That's not hard, right? We should put God first. Right. We should desire Him. We should make Him the most important person. He should have the preeminence. Uh, put, put Him in the place of Amen. worship, like that word means. Uh, and again, give Him that preeminence of Colossians chapter 1 in our lives. So that's the first word there is that seeketh. Uh, and then the second word is the Greek word, hutau, which means this, me. Me. Yourself, right? right? Seeking yourself or, or seeking me. That's what he's saying here. So notice that charity seeketh not. Right. It doesn't, uh, we see what, char what we're supposed to seek is God, right? Amen. But what we're not supposed to put first uh, or pursue is ourselves. Right. What he's talking about here is it, 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 putting myself, really, we don't like to say it this way. I don't think anybody would but putting myself in the place of God. Right. 
Uh, and so agape love, this charity, seeketh not her own. In other words, put it simply, if I'm going to show God's agape love, then I do not and cannot put myself first. Right. Can't do it. Right. I am not, you say, well, that's what the world does. They sure do. They put themselves first, but we're not supposed to do that. I, if I'm going to show agape love to my spouse, my wife, uh, my children, uh, other church members, then I cannot, I must not give myself the preeminence above all things, uh, particularly before you, or think of myself first. So really what we're talking about here, and here's your blank if you're looking for it, what we're talking about here is the word selfishness. That's what we're talking about tonight. Selfishness. Selfishness is the exact opposite of God's agape love. Right. And selfishness is, giving you a double negative, is not only not love, selfishness is sin. Amen. It's a sin. Right. And that's, that was the title I was going to give to this uh, message tonight, The Sin of Selfishness. But... Uh, Anyway, I want you to notice, uh, because it is a sin. Right. Uh, now, now, notice, I, I found this, uh, this uh, definition in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. It's, it's a little bit long, but uh, stay with me. It's really good. Hang in there, all right? Uh, it's, it's early in the message, so you should be with me at least for a little bit. All right? Notice how it defines selfishness or seeking our own. Watch this. It is the exclusive regard of a person to his own happy interest or happiness. That's what it is. In other words, all I care about is my happiness, how things affect me. Notice he goes on to say, the dictionary, or that supreme self-love or self-preference which leads a person in his actions to direct his purposes to the advancement of his own interest, power, or happiness without regarding the interests of others. In other words, I'm going to advance myself, I'm going to get one, do what I want to do, and I don't care about anybody else. Notice selfishness, I'm not sure if I have that here, selfishness in its worst is the very, this is from the dictionary, by the way, again, Webster's 1828, selfishness in its worst is the very essence of human depravity and stands in direct opposition to benevolence, which is the essence of of the divine character. As God is love, so man in his natural state is selfish. Right. I thought that's good. Amen. That was a dictionary from Webster's 1828 again. In other words, it, it's when we say, it's all about me. Right. It, it's all about me. Now, the spirit of selfishness I was found throughout the Bible, and a little more about that here in a little bit, but it's really captured in the words of Esau. Do you remember after Esau had the blessing stolen from him by Jacob? Uh, and he went, of course, to his dad. And in Genesis 27 and verse 38, uh, the Bible says, And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Whenever I read that, I always say, wow, that is that is so, so, I mean, I can see it. Say, what about me? You blessed him. Me, don't you have something for me, 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 me? That, my friend, is seeking your own. That, my friend, is selfishness. Amen. By the way, the problem is this. We're all born selfish. Right. Amen. All of us. Right. Me. Amen. You. Amen. Everybody. Right. We're all born selfish. We're born self-centered. We're born thinking, more about this later, that the world should revolve around us. Right. Psalm 58 and verse 3 says, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. That's why that one of the things that is vital for a parent to do early in the life of a child, early in his age, is to break a child's self-will. 
Now, we used to say this, and I think saying this got us in trouble, and I think we meant self-will, but we used to say, break a child's will. And boy, the liberals just took that to town. You don't break a kid's will. They say, you don't want to do anything. We're not talking about his will. We're talking about his self-will. Right. We're trying to break his self-will. And uh, every child has to learn that uh, he is not the only person in the world. Because that's what they're born thinking. That the world, he has to learn, the world does not revolve around him. That he's not entitled to behave however he wants. He's not entitled to get whatever he wants. And he's not entitled to get his way all the time. That's what he must learn. And understand, a selfish child that's unaddressed will grow up to be a selfish adult. And we got a bunch of them. You know, it's interesting where when we read the first Corinthians 13, it talks about when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I Amen. thought as a child. You know, when we're children, we're selfish. When we grow up, hello, people, right. we should stop being selfish and right. stop seeking our own. Amen. Now, it's interesting that American parents, for the most part, used to, and I emphasize the phrase, used to believe this way, that it's a parent's job to teach that child that the, he's not the only person in the world. He's not to get his way all the time. That's not how it works. It's not about you. Amen. But uh, we believe that in America until Dr. Spock. Now, some of you don't know who Dr. Spock I mean, is. I'm dating myself here. But uh, how many know who Dr. Spock is? Wow, pretty good amount. How many were raised by Dr. Spock? It's philosophy, all right? Come on, most of you are here. Others are going to. Now, it was interesting because I, a 2018 article was published entitled this, A Time When Parents Followed Dr. Spock's Every Word on Child Care. The article said this. It said, in 1946, Dr. Benjamin Spock released his first book, Baby and Child Care. By the way, you go to your average Goodwill today, you are likely to find one there. Start rooting through the books. And when you do, burn it. Throw it, not in the store, okay? Take it home and burn it, all right? Don't get, don't get us in trouble here. But uh, baby and child care. It has been translated, listen, this is the article, into 42 different languages, sold millions of copies, and remains one of the world's best sellers even after all those years. I read in another article, look at some of this stuff up, that they are actually claiming that the, his book on child care here is now, and I don't know if it's true, this is what they say, is number two to the Bible. Wow. Number two. All time, but that's what they say. I, 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 you verify it yourself. It was absolutely revolutionary for its time because his views caused a massive shift in parenting techniques around the world. This is still the article. Dr. Spock advised mothers and fathers that babies don't need strict routines and that it was more important to give a baby attention whenever they demanded it and that parents should pander to a child's every cry. And by the way, he called this love. Interesting. See where we are today? Right. It's not love. Amen. It's not God. Does God do that to us? Hey, million dollars. How about 2.5? We can build a building up. No, I, <laughs> I got one amen there, but anyway. All right. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, that, that's not love. But why is that? Because love, watch this, seek is not our own. Right. Seek is not our own. Now, this philosophy has produced a world filled with with selfish people. That's what we're seeing all around us today. People, it's all about me, what I get and what I want. That, that's what it's about. And by the way, God said it would be this way in the last days. Amen. 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 2. This know also in the last days, perilous times shall come, right? For men shall be what? Lovers of their own selves. Right. Covetous, boasters, proud. But understand, believers who want to show God's love, His agape love to others, and make a difference in this world, and be like the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, if that's what we want, that's what we should want, we should seek not our own. Amen. We should not be selfish people. Right. So we see, number one, the definition of seeking your own. Then number two, let's talk about this, the description of seeking your own. Um, by the way, selfish people, people who 
uh, who, who oh, it's all about them, uh, they're hard to live with. They're unpleasant to be around. And we could talk about many characteristics of a self-centered, selfish person. But I'm going to give you two of them tonight. Notice the first one. Number one is this. A selfish person ignores God's word. Right. They do. I'm going to prove that to you. Right. Because a selfish person, watch what they do. They do what they want to do. Right. This is what I want to do. Right. It's not about what God says. It's not about what God commands. Uh, they may cherry pick the things they like out of the Bible because it's stuff they want to do. I'm going to do that anyway. So yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Right. But I'm not doing that right. if I don't want to do it. Uh, you see, the goal of someone who is selfish is not to please the Lord. It's to please themselves. Right. It's to seek their own. Is to live unto himself. That's what a selfish person does. He is self-willed. He is self-pleasing. And I say he generically. Uh, he's dominated by his own will. And he is not subject to the will of God, which is the exact opposite of what God desires. God wants us to put our will aside, our desires aside, our thoughts aside, and, of course, submit to him. And we read that again and again in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 5.15. That's kind of my life verse, if you will. I, I usually, I do always sign that when I sign my name. And that he died for all, watch this, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. That's a command of God. Right. We're not to live for us. It's not about what I want. It's not about what I desire. It's about what God wants. Amen. Romans chapter 15 and verse 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Right. A lot of people live to please themselves. Uh, you know, in the qualifications of a pastor found in Titus chapter 1, in verse 7, we read this, For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed. Right. It's not about what I want to do. It's about what God says. That's the way it's supposed to be. But understand, when self is on the throne, when I am seeking my own, when I am a selfish person, I will put what I want to do above what God tells me to do, and I will end up ignoring the Word of God. You see, many times a selfish person, I said this a moment ago, but I'll say it again, has no problem with the Bible until it goes against what they want them to do, what they want to do, sorry. I'm okay with it, but that, no, 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 no. And again, when it does, when it strikes them, or puts aside what they think, then what happens is the Bible goes out the window right. and self is on the throne. By the way, there's this constant war. You, know, you understand this. This is a constant thing. There's a constant battle between the spirit and the flesh. Right. For who is going to sit on the throne of your life and my life? And we are supposed to die to self and let the Spirit of God lead us by being filled with the Spirit, yielded to Him. That's the design of the Christian life. That means I'm like you. Every day I want to do what I want to do. But that's not the right thing to do. And that's not what God wants me to do. And that's not the best thing to do because God's way is always the best way. So notice two things He does. He ignores God's word, number one, in his actions. Right. So guess what? A self, someone who seeketh, uh, not, uh, who's seeking his own, selfish, if he doesn't want to go to church, he ain't going to church. Right. I don't want to. What are you going to do about it? That's the attitude right. of somebody. It's, it's all about me. Right. I'll go when I want to go. When I want to go, I'll go. I don't want to go, I don't want to go. All right, get off my back. <laughs> That's kind of the way it is. Uh, it's, we could say that about all kinds of things. If they don't want to tithe, doesn't matter what the Bible says. Right. They're, they're not going to do it. I'm not doing it. Why? I, I'm just not. I don't want to do it. Right. Okay. You're seeking your own. Right. If they don't want to witness to the lost or hand out a track or try to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ somehow, they don't have to be door to door or whatever. Maybe. But I, just, I, just, I don't want to do that. I just, I'm uncomfortable with doing that. Uh, then guess what? They're not going to do it. Doesn't matter how many verses you show them, how many times you show the examples in the Bible, what God commands us to do. That doesn't matter to someone who is seeking his own. And by the way, we can seek our own in certain areas of life and not in all of them. 
If they don't want to read the Bible, they're not going to read the Bible because they don't want to do it. If they want to listen to worldly music, I'm going to listen to it. What are you going to say about it? If they want to dress immodestly, you know, don't, they're going to do it. If they want to go to the bar, they're going to go to the bar. If they want to smoke cigarettes or, or get a tattoo or whatever they want to do, I'm going to do it because that's what about what the Bible says? Amen. What about what the Word of God tells us? Amen. Well, I just, I, I just want to do this. You're seeking your own. And again, a person that seeks his own ignores God's word in his action. If they want to buy something they can't afford, don't have the money for it, doesn't matter, they're going to get it. Which is easy to do in America, by the way. Just sign your name on the line, and boy, they'll give you all kinds of money. You want just to go in debt. Just go ahead and do it. Uh, but uh, if they want to buy I'm going to do it. Whether I can afford it or not, that's not the question. Uh, if they want to tell somebody off, uh, you can show them from the Bible. Well, that's not the way you ought to handle it. Right. Guess what? I'm upset. Uh, and guess what? Self is on the throne, and that's what they do. They tell somebody off because their life is about what they want to do. Amen. What I want to do. Uh, no one's telling them what to do. Nope. Not even God. Why? They are self Willed. Now, there's a good example of being this, this, this kind of principle here of being self-willed and ignoring God's word. You remember the story of Simeon and Levi with right. Dinah in right. uh, Genesis uh, 35. Right. You know the story just before Joseph in Genesis 37, of course. Uh, uh, they, they, they come back and they stop off at Shechem there and Dinah goes out to see the land and that sort of thing. And, and she's defiled by Shechem. And uh, they, uh, she came back and the, the brothers found out about what happened. And it enraged them, and specifically, particularly Simeon and Levi, so much so what did they do? They went over to Shechem, make a long story short, and they slew all of the males in the city, not just Shechem and his father and all that, but all of them with the sword. Why is that? Because that's what they wanted to do. Right. You see, self-willed people, they react emotionally right. and not biblically. Right. Knee-jerk reactions right. and not spirit-filled reactions. And notice what's, what's said of them in Genesis 49 and verse 6. When uh, 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 Jacob is dying, or, or, or uh, Isaac's dying. Anyway, Genesis 4, 9, 6. Oh, my soul, come not thou into their secret, under their assembly. Mine honor, be not thou united. For in their anger they slew a man, talking about Shechem. And in their self-will they digged down a wall. That's what a self, selfish person does. He ignores God's word. And you see that in his actions. But you also see it, number two, in his decisions. You see, when it's time to make one of, maybe one of life's big decisions, a self-willed person will do what they want to do. Right. And that's it. Uh, let's say something like this, uh, moving to another city. Right. Or buying a large item, right. a car, a boat, something. Maybe taking a new job. Uh, or uh, buying a new home, or, or, or what college to go to, or who to marry, or whether to stay married, or providing a Christian education for their children. You see, to the selfish person, it's not about what God's Word says. It's not about the principles of what God's will is. It's, again, about what they want. They make all their decisions based on themselves. Right. They seeketh their own. So again, letter A, they ignore God's word. Uh, they, I'm sorry, selfish person. And then letter B on the back. Also, a selfish person thinks the world revolves around them. Right. Anybody know anybody like that? They just think the world... Don't. Stop pointing to that person, okay? <laughs> they think the world revolves around them. Uh, newsflash, it doesn't. Amen. It doesn't. Right. And if you have that view, you're making a mess of things. And I'm going to show you why here in a little bit. Amen. So here are two ways that they think the world revolves around them. Number one, they think that people should cater to their wants. Right. Do you know that a selfish person always has to have their own way? Right. They have to have their own way. <laughs> Genevieve knows somebody. Amen. Don't don't throw out any names. Uh, they have to be the one. It has to be their way when it's time to go somewhere. They have to choose it. Right. 
When it's time to do an activity, it has to be their activity. Right. When it's time to choose what to eat or where to eat or when to eat, it's got to be their, their decision. they got to agree with it. If they don't, then, then they're not going to do it. When it's time to pick a game, hey, let's play a game. What do you, you want to play? No, 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 it doesn't go like that. The stuff is for, no, I'm playing this or I'm not playing. Yeah, if, if we, if, no, I'm not, I'm not playing. And I'm not playing that, I'm not playing that, I'm not playing that. I'll play this, so. Oh, wow, that's nice. Well, maybe I don't want to play that. Imagine if we all did that. We wouldn't be doing anything, would we? But that's what selfish people do. When it's time to watch something, I don't know, and I'm talking about not junk, but, you know, maybe watch something, Chefy, you know, something like that, or something like that. You know, they, they want to watch with that. I'm not watching that, and I'm not watching that. We're watching this. Well, nobody else wants to watch that. Well, then, well, then I'm not watching anything. Go ahead, watch it. That's, that's, that's what we're talking about here. Uh, they, they never take one for the team. Never do. Ne- never do. And, and if they don't get what they want, uh, they either refuse to participate or they get mad or they have a bad attitude the whole time. And you've got to look at that lip hanging out the whole time you're doing whatever. All right, I'll play the game. Is it my turn yet? That's what we have to deal with with someone who is Selfish, why? Because they think everybody should cater to their wants. Right. It doesn't work that way. Right. That's not how life works, okay? Right. Again, it's not about you. And then also they think, number two, that people should cater to their ways. Right. You see, selfish people won't put up with anybody else's ways right. but their own. Right. And they'd expect everyone else to put up with their ways. Right. Does that make sense? They don't put up with anybody else's ways, but they want everybody else to put up with theirs. Everybody has to put up with their bad attitude. Everybody has to put up with their self-centered behavior. Everybody has to put up with their moodiness, with their, with their pouting, uh, and with the, their self-justification of why they can behave the way that they behave. You see, selfish people, until they get right with God, refuse to change. They have a like it or lump it attitude, okay? This is just the way I am, and this is just what I'm doing. We're going to do this, this, and then all that. Well, that, that's just wonderful. Uh, can I ask you something? Does that describe you? Would you be willing to ask someone, am I like that? Right. If not, maybe... It, Maybe it does describe you. You see, that's the description of seeking your own. It's somebody that has this idea that, uh, that, that, that I'm going to do my thing, and I, you know, forget about that for now, because I want to do what I want to do. They ignore the Word of God. A- and they think the world revolves around them. Everybody needs to cater to them, which leads to number three, and we're done, the destructiveness of seeking your own. You want to behave that way? Go ahead. Go ahead. See how it ends up. I'm not saying go ahead. You understand that. That was tongue-in-cheek. The destructiveness. One author wrote this. He says, selfishness lies at the root of all evil in the world. Between nations, families, churches, and individuals. Imagine having a business meeting and everybody wanted to have it their way. Thank God for leadership, right? That God Amen. provides leadership and he settles it in his word. But there are a lot of churches that fall apart because everybody has to have it their way. You know, when we, we, when we redid the auditorium here, we, we purposely didn't ask you all about colors. <laughs> and I'd ta- I would take the blame for it. And me and my wife talked about colors. And we, you know, people had an eye, we did, because, because everybody has an idea. Right. And the moment you say yes or or yes to one thing, you're saying no to everybody else. Right. And so, really, the, the person in spirit says, what's the difference? You know, as long as it's not some, like, you know, orange or whatever, you know, <laughs> something that's just, like, real yucky. Yeah, you know, that, that's okay. But uh, imagine if you try to do anything and everybody's just seeking their own. Right. You can't move forward with anything. Amen. You can't, you'll never satisfy anyone. And so it des- it's destructive. Notice what it does real quick, and we're done. Letter A is this. It destroys relationships. Right. Listen, selfishness destroys marriages. Right. If you're a selfish wife, you're destroying your marriage. Right. Amen. If you're a selfish husband, Amen. you're destroying your marriage. Right. If you just live your life and you're not concerned about your family, 
and uh, what's, what's going on in the home, and it's all about you, and you want to live like you're a single man or live like you're a teenager, playing videos all day, spending money out your ear, and the bills are who knows where. You're a selfish man. Right. You're selfish. Right. You don't think about anybody. Right. What about those kids? What about your wife? Amen. What about everybody else? Right. It, it destroys families. It destroys friendships. Listen, nobody wants to be around someone that seeks their own all the time. Right. Can I say that again? Amen. If you're the type of person, it's got to be my way, guess what? Nobody's going to want to do anything with you. Right. Because I, we just got to do whatever right. he wants or she wants, whatever the case is. Uh, uh, somebody that, uh, that always thinks of themselves, uh, that does not consider the opinions of others. We're not talking about doctrine here. That doesn't care about others. Uh, that doesn't think about, you know what, maybe, maybe somebody else likes what I don't like, right. and vice versa. Amen. And, and, and it's true. Uh, they don't, uh, and, uh, selfish people will never be inconvenienced for other people. Right. But that's part of life. Amen. Sometimes you got to go places you don't like to go. Right. Or you prefer not to go. Right. you got to go to a restaurant. Maybe it's not your favorite. Right. Or you got to eat something maybe you don't like. Right. If, you, if you're trying to show God's love and, and get, get along in a relationship, right. you know, just dragging people around all the time, saying, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this, not caring what they think about. Right. That's seeking your own. Know. You know, we can even serve the Lord seeking our own. In other words, right. I'll serve on my terms. Yeah. In other words, I'll do something for God as long as it doesn't inconvenience me. Right. As long as it doesn't take me out of my way. If I feel like doing it, I'll do it. If I don't, I don't. Well, that's a seeking your own attitude. Right. We're supposed to do it whether we feel like it or not. Because why? That's charity. That's God's love. And so think about it. It's going to destroy relationships. That's what it does. Uh, uh, somebody who's not willing, at least occasionally, uh, to do something you don't like uh, for the sake of others. Listen, there'll never be harmony in your marriage if you're someone that always has to have your way. There may be, may be a false harmony, but not a true harmony. There'll never be harmony in your family if every, every sibling has to say, I want this, and I want this, and I want that seat, and I want this, to watch this, and I want to play this game. Listen, that, that's not God's love. Amen. Sometimes you've got to do what other people want. Right. Amen. Same thing with the church. There'll never be harmony in the church if, if when someone's here, I have to have my way. So it destroys relationships. Secondly, number two, it also distorts reality. Right. You see, selfish people... They know they're selfish, but they can't admit it. Because that would make them look bad. Right. So they distort reality. Right. Well, I'm not that bad. That's just the way I am. I don't have to be that. I'm not that way all the time. No, well, you are. <laughs> you are. You, 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 you're creating a false narrative to justify your behavior. Right. And you act like everybody else has the problem. When you're the one, you're just seeking your own all the time. And again, you're distorting reality. And then letter C, we're done, is this. It also develops into other wrongs, right. particularly lying. Right. Here's what I mean. So here's a husband, and I'm, I'm picking on a husband. This isn't, if the shoe fits, wear it, but I'm not thinking about anybody, right? Here's a husband, he just don't want to go to church. He has the idea, I work hard all week. I deserve a day off. Hey, notice I, 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 seek is not around. There it is. I work hard all week. I'm tired. I need a little time. And I just don't want to. I don't feel like it. I'd sit through there, listen to the preacher, and yell at me, and <laughs> do all that stuff, and feel guilty, and, and go on. And just, no, I don't want, I don't want that. But he, but he knows that the Bible says, not forsaking the assembly ourselves. Amen together, right. as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Right. So he, he knows that to be true. So guess what he has to do? He's got to lie. Right. Well, I'm not feeling good anyway. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My back's out. That's what it is. My back's out. Yeah. Yeah, tell the preacher that my back's out. And by the way, put a prayer request in for me. <laughs> Just say, my, pray for so-and-so because his, his back is out. His back is out. What do you think? Everybody doesn't know what's going on. But then the next morning, you're just like this. <laughs> going to work. What happened to the back of the time? 
What's the problem? You're seeking your own. Right. You're selfish. Amen. By the way, selfish people, when they're sick, it's the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my nose is running. And my nose is running. <laughs> Call the doctor. <laughs> Be a man. Right. Do what you're supposed to do. Right. Stop seeking your own. Right. Because that's what it does. Right. It develops into more wrongs. Lying. So I asked tonight. Is that you? Do you have to have your way all the time? You have to go to wherever you want to go all the time. You're not doing this, and I'm doing this, and I'm not doing that, and, that, and I don't care what anybody else says. You guys, okay, you're without, forget about me then. Just go yourself. And I'm just gonna go. Or you do it, and you're like, yeah, I'm okay. One verse, and we're done. Philippians 2 4. Amen. Here's the solution. You know the verse because we've seen it. Right. Philippians 2 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. You know, you're going to find something out. If you seek not your own, right. and you become concerned about others, right. and you perform, or people will say, a self-sacrificing act that is done for the benefit, spiritual benefit of another, Amen. what you're going to find out, you're going to feel better than you ever felt before. Amen. Because you're being a blessing to someone. And you get joy out of seeing them enjoy something. Right. Oh, I don't eat this whatever it is that I don't really like, but you know what? They're enjoying it. Amen. And you know what? feels pretty good. Amen. And God blesses us for doing right. that. Amen. And it creates harmony Amen. in the home, Amen. the marriage, Amen. the family, and the church Amen. when it's not all about me. Thank you, Jesus. Charity Amen. seeketh not right. alone.